I, I think it is uh, more uh, Mr. Tarur's uh, attempt to do it, uh, make it very personal. I certainly have not. I have not, uh, I don't uh, think uh, uh, this is about personalities at all. There is obviously people who haven't done very much in their uh, opportunities when people are giving them the opportunity who want to make it about personalities. That's not me. I'm not doing that. There is no personality. It is a clash, it is a clash of ideology. We're talking about Kerala having to make a choice between a candidate who not only delivers but who takes such very clear positions on the key issues facing the nation versus a candidate who represents a party that has communalized discourse in this country. Whatever the reasons, the dominant theme in the contest for the Tiruvananthapuram Lok Sabha seat is the face-off between these two suave, erudite, media-savvy and high-profile personalities. The incumbent three-time MP Sashi Tharoor and the Union Minister of State and Rajya Sabha MP who has been given the task of conquering the seat. In the Sashi Tharoor versus Rajiv Chandrasekhar contest, the one getting squeezed out, at least in terms of optics from a national point of view, is the left front candidate Pani in Ravindran, an ex MP in left ruled Kerala. Well, are there grassroots equations between the INDIA allies? Because the left is also fighting a battle for national relevance in terms of retaining numbers in parliament. Ravindran was the last left candidate to win this seat in 2005. While Kerala is predominantly a left versus Congress battle at the state level, Tiruvananthapuram is the one Lok Sabha seat where since 2014 the BJP has firmly held the second place with around 32% vote share and the left relegated to a third place with around 25% vote. There have been accusations of a tacit understanding between the INDIA allies in a parliamentary election to keep the BJP out. So the issue is not at all about whether India Alliance, two partners, represent the challenge to the BJP. The issue is whether they will resort to some dirty tricks or vote transfers, etc., etc., to keep the BJP out. And I am ensuring that I campaign hard to make sure that even if they try that, we have enough of a majority. That's an understanding between us because we are sworn enemies in the state of Kerala. If anything, we have seen a number of places there has been collusion between the left and the BJP because the BJP nationally really believes in pursuing this Congress Mukta Bharat concept. Grassroot equations in this highly literate, politically astute, an extremely aware and involved state are intricate. Can the Narendra Modi persona and the Rajiv Chandrasekhar campaign rewrite the BJP's Tiruvanantapuram script? The party has been nurturing this constituency for a while coming second in 2014 and 2019. The Tiruvanantapuram experiment for the Bharatiya Janata Party is an important one in its Kerala narrative. For the Congress, it's the last of its bastions and every seat counts here. And for the left, a quest to retain relevance, making this much more significant for the three national parties than just a clash of personalities. In Tirvanantapuram, Niradhan for New Delhi Television.